Hi there, Clayton McLeod here. I'm going to try and quickly go over some of the uh, stuff that you have to look at in MoTeC for uh, setting up your inerters. The iRacing uh, forums thread for this has uh, a whole bunch of info on what you need to do to get uh, some of the setup and some of the other procedures that you'll need to go through, but um, I'll just quickly show you uh, these constants in the math section in MoTeC and uh, I'm sure you can get these values in MoTeC as well but uh, I've already got Atlas set up uh, from my previous tests so I'll just show you where I find those. I'll take one of the uh, five second telemetry files that uh, is just the car sitting still and uh, get those numbers from there and then I'll punch them into MoTeC. So the five second file there will give me uh, some decent means. I'll take those means and punch them into the various spots here in uh, MoTeC and then uh, it's able to do its thing after that. So I've already got some data from Road America for this week. Uh, what I have here is all the different 10 kilogram steps. We'll load them all up and make sure we've got zero set for our base and then we'll find 10 to compare it to. I usually start with the rears. Now what you want to do is uh, look at the amplitude of each and see which one's lower probably best to look at 10 Hertz and below. I can't remember where I read that now, but uh, the amplitudes of all these oscillations at uh, 10 Hertz and below is a lot bigger than the rest of the spectrum. Probably why it's wisest to look there because uh, you want to get rid of the larger amplitude oscillations as much as you can so that that tire is giving you more grip. Uh, you can look at whole laps and find a general improvement. Uh, iRacing engineer Eric Hudeck had suggested looking at uh, different sections of the course instead and uh, for the rears you'll probably gain the most by concentrating on exit out of slow corners down straights so out of this corner and out of the last corner will probably be where you'd concentrate on for the rears. So in order to do that, we'll zoom in. I haven't looked at MoTeC enough to know yet whether or not there's another way to zoom in, but uh, dragging this thing is pretty annoying and takes a whole bunch of attempts. I think because every time you move it, it's recalculating the graphs as you do so. Uh, once it gets below a certain threshold, it's pretty easy to move it then. Uh, once you've got a decent sized section zoomed in to look at do yourself a favor and hit zoom save because once you start selecting other laps to compare sometimes this will reset itself to looking at a whole lap again then when it does so you can just hit zoom restore and then you've got your thing back and you don't have to go through the nine million clicks to get a zoom section again so for this exit 10 kilograms actually looks worse than zero as you can see the amplitude in some cases is quite a bit different but just generally speaking it's higher so we'll ignore 10 see what 20 looks like 20 is a good deal lower and a good portion of that here not so much but this difference is probably pretty significant coming out of a right hand corner and the left tire is showing a good deal of improvement I would take that as a good sign you can look at some of these other acceleration zones here it's not so clear a little bit better there probably best to focus on the spots where you're gonna gain the most time and spend the most uh, time accelerating 
like here. Only a little short stretch. Probably wouldn't worry too much about what you gain or lose there compared to what you're going to gain here going down this long straight and uh, this one as well. Not so much different there, but obviously better there. How about 30? 30 looks like it might be even be a tiny bit better again. And here, yeah, there it might even be a little bit worse. So we know that 20 was a lot better than zero. Why don't we just ignore zero from now on? Switch our base comparison to 20. And you can see what I'm talking about with the full lap zoom being reset. So fix that by hitting zoom restore. Go back to this again. So between 20 and 30, it gets a little harder to see whether you're not whether or not you're getting a gain. Might be a little bit better coming out of this corner. What about the start finish? You can see 30 is a little bit worse than 20. But that's basically what you would do is go through and look at uh, different kilogram settings. Find one that's obviously better. You might see different results up here, 40, 50, 60 zone, but whatever. We'll just say 20 ended up being the best one of the bunch. So what you would do is zoom in on 20. Uh, maybe take two kilogram steps around 20 now. So we'll go 16, 18, 22, and 24. Go record laps for those settings and come back and compare them to 20. Maybe you'll find that uh, 22 is, is the best out of those. So maybe record another couple at 21 and 23. And maybe 23 will be the best. And then you'll have your setting for the rears. And for the fronts, you might want to make your zoom section even smaller. So you can uh, concentrate on a corner and see how your performance was through the corner. Right hand turn, so it might make sense to concentrate more on the uh, left tire. We should set this back to zero again. Zero, and we'll look at 10 kilograms. And I should have hit zoom save again. Save. So, compare zero kilograms and 10 kilograms at each of these corners. You might want to look at the outside tire more than the inside tire, depending on which corner you're looking at. But you do the same process, go through and look at uh, each step until you find one that's obviously better. Narrow your search down. Go record a few more laps with uh, finer steps and then uh, find your optimal setting. And then once you've got them, set them, <laughs> run a bunch of laps and you should see better times coming your way. Uh, for more detailed info, obviously we've been discussing it on the forum, so go hop on there and uh, join in. See you there.